Welcome to the Dad Code Podcast, where real dads come for real talk and no BS. We are your hosts, Blake Melton, Bradley Newberry, and Matthew Parker via phone. What's up, dudes? It's time. We're going to the south. Here we go. Going down south to the dirty, dirty. Oh, God. We have no thoughts about the south, right? No, no, we know nothing. Uh, Well, clearly this guy next to me knows nothing if you see what he's wearing. About to bring the knowledge. Whatever. Hey, let's just jump into the NFC South. Let's do it. Maybe the South that doesn't matter in this podcast. Yeah. The Atlanta Falcons were 4-12 and last year. I'm going to jump right into what I like. Florida Gator, Kyle Pitts, 6'6", tight end. In eight games last year, he had 12 touchdowns. I mean, he's got all the accolades, all the awards, right? I like that Dan Quinn is gone. I like that Arthur Smith is in. And I like Calvin Ridley. Like, Well, I mean, Calvin Ridley is, I guess, I, I'm an, I like Arthur Smith, too, uh, for obvious reasons. Um uh, I, I just I don't have a ton of focus here on Atlanta just because I think that this is going to be a rough year for them. And uh, I don't think there's any reason to get too far ahead of ourselves in with likes just because there's so much that they've got to rebuild here. Piggybacking off of Kyle Pitts, love Kyle Pitts. By the way, do you know Kyle Pitts has a longer wingspan than any wide receiver tight end in the NFL in the last 20 years. He's a man child. He's just going to be unbelievable. But piggybacking again, I do love Calvin Ridley. Uh, He had a stretch of eight games with more than 100 yards receiving last year. They brought in Arthur Smith, who loves play action. So does Calvin Ridley last year. Almost every time they ran a play action, it ran for 15 yards with Calvin Ridley. Pass not ran, but play ran for 15 yards. I expect Calvin really to be top five, possibly a top three receiver this year. Nice. So I have some doubts, like we all do, about the Falcons. I'm going to start with their defense. Shocking, what do you right? Know? What defense. Do you know? <laughs> hey, look, they've statistically been one of the worst in the last three years, dating back to 2018. Whenever you call out the names, listen. Grady Jackson and Dante Fowler Jr. are supposed to be the leaders on this defense. You have a problem. (laughs) Um, Also questioning their running game. Um, I know they're going to try to put it together there. Arthur Smith is very good at, you know, with the bigger backs like Mm -hmm. we've seen in Tennessee. Um, They're going to try to go with that type of running back there in Atlanta, but uh, I'm questioning the defensive makeup. Yeah, I am looking. I mean, like I said, Matt Ryan's gone. Julio's gone. Ty Gurley's gone. I mean, dude, I mean, there's so many key pieces that are just gone. We, uh, I do not think this is going to be a good year for Atlanta. I think this is a, a definitely a year that Arthur Smith is going to have to, um, uh, he's going to have to work his magic for sure. He's going to have to be creative with what he does for sure. Um, my concern with them is a lot like Pittsburgh. Who are they? You know, they seem to be rebuilding, but also seem to not be rebuilding. They've got one of the best young receivers, one of the best young tight ends, we think. Uh, but they've got an aging quarterback. They've got an old running back in Mike Davis. They, they seem to be feeling like they could still win games, but not feeling like they can still win games. I, I honestly think they should just tank and, and, and move on. Um, I do think, though, that with the talent that they have, that if they – play well arthur smith is a candidate for coach of the year um but again i I don't know who this team is trying to be sorry if i said matt ryan's gone i don't know why the hell i wrote that i don't know why i wrote that down anyways sorry guys correction fact check fake news fake news so uh in a prediction piece i wanted to have this team second in this division Mm. um at the last second i kind of changed it by one game i'm going an uptick from the Falcons, seven and ten. Yep, that's what I got them to seven and ten. Make that three. Wow, what? Is, <laughs> I don't from, know. We do not. Get I don't there. know. <laughs> that's silly. Good lord. All yeah. right, 
Carolina Panthers. Let's go. Five and 11 last year. Blake, do you have anything that you like about the team on the East Coast? I mean, McCaffrey, right? Dude. Where was he? Hurt. I, I mean, yeah. Sitting in the kitchen. Look, dude, I don't know, but this is the thing. I mean, like you said, he's a fantasy player's dream. He's legit. Um, He's the big bright spot for them, for them, I think. So, from a fan's perspective, that's what I got. We got Parker. Guys, I am giddy about this team. They are one of my favorite teams in the league this year, and I believe in all their weapons. I believe in Sam Darnold on a new team, but most of all, I believe in the next coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, Panthers offensive coordinator Joe Brady. This guy is so hot in the coaching world. The Panthers won five games last year, and he still should have got a, ho- a head coaching job. Last year under Brady, the Carolina Panthers, with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback, who isn't lighting the world on fire, had three receivers with more than 850 yards and two with more than 1,100. Put that into perspective, the Super Bowl champs with the best quarterback in the history of the league, three star receivers, that would be number one on almost any other team, had one guy with more than 850 yards. Okay. I mean, I'll piggyback off of that. I like... A very underrated wide receiving core with Anderson and DJ Moore. I like their rookie selection at cornerback, J.C. Horn. It's easy to like that McCaffrey is back, which spells good news for Brandon's fantasy team. (laughs) But here we go. I'm questioning. Who's replacing Luke Kuechly at linebacker? Defense. On third down last year, Carolina, you were next to last at giving up 49% on third downs. O-line is questionable. What do you think? I mean, offensive line is questionable. I I question the Sam Darnold move. Is he the answer? I don't I mean, I still think this is one of those teams that I could give or take with. I mean, they were on and for me, they were they were so forgetful in our eliminator show that I think we just didn't really talk much about them, quite frankly. But um, I uh, don't – I'm not real high on them this year. I think they're going to win six games. What do you not like? Are any concerns your way, Parker? Yeah, I don't like tight end situation. Who's going to step up tight end? Ian Thomas, Dan Arnold, Tommy Tremble. I mean, no one's getting scared of these guys, right? They've been um, looking for someone since Olsen. They've been trying. Yes, yep. they have been. And and this is going to sound more like a like, but this is just how high I am on this team. Uh, I, I know you question defense, and I do too, but if Sam Darnold is Ryan Tannehill after Adam Gase, which is a real possibility, this guy ruins players. This team could outscore teams. doesn't matter what their defense is. I, I really am high on this team. And they're one of my sneaky picks that could – do something special and and i even hesitated and tampered this down i got going 10 and 7 nice okay but this is what i like yeah our dynamic yeah i don't want us to be the same um when i first first wrote down the prediction i uh i had them at seven but i've marked through it and after reading more about questions on defense and o-line I'm going officially five and twelve. Five and 12. I don't. I don't. Unlike Parker, I don't think much of the uh, the quarterback thing. No. Now look, if it works, it works. Okay, so then then it might be closer to my seven win prediction. I think if it bombs or if he gets hurt, this is a disaster. Oh, it it is an unmitigated disaster. Oh, that could definitely happen. I mean, I don't even know what's what's their what's their backup situation there. If it's not Teddy. Hurt. I mean that's the thing. I mean, I don't, I wait, know. wait, 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 wait. We do know, we do know who was it. It was a, uh, it was a rookie last year, right? Didn't they draft someone? Heck, it might have been a former Gator that transferred. What's his name? I don't know why I'm sounding like this. I don't know. He'll find it. Parker will find it. I don't know, but either way, that doesn't sound good to me either. Sorry, guys, cut out there for a minute. By the way, Will, Will Greer. That's it, Greer. He's and DJ Walker. Yeah, it, it's questions. Mm. Questions. That, I mean, that could that could go even worse. 
for him really fast right. if that happens. Well, you don't believe in Will Greer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I believe in Will Greer against the UT Vols. Uh, I believe in anybody against them lately. Yeah, I know. Well, I think there's a few high school quarterbacks that I believe in versus hey, the Vols this year. I got a question. Does anyone believe in Jameis Winston? Because we're going to NOLA next. Jameis! The New Orleans Saints last year were 12-4. and four. I like the running backs. Mm-hmm. I like Kamara and Murray. Yep. Uh, Kamara has been a pro bowler every season in the NFL. He's four for four. Um, No matter what they have at quarterback. And yes, Jameis, I called you what? You've been blessed with a great offensive line. Mm-hmm. What you got, Blake? I'm with you. The running back situation is, is good. I mean, Kamara and Murray. Kamar is just so versatile. Catches balls out of the backfield. Really good at running. Uh, Michael Thomas, he's coming back. Um, I, I I think he has targets. I'm not convinced that Jameis Winston's going to be the guy that's going to be able to really get uh, the ball distributed <laughs> without turning it over. Uh, I, I'm, well, I'm not going to get into too much there, but yeah, I like their running back situation. They've got some, some skill position guys that I think could, uh, could do some things. Kamara is incredibly efficient. Grading them stat on him. I think he's got one of the best touchdown to games played ratios in the history of the league. He's scored one touchdown on average in every single game that he's ever played. Um, uh, but this isn't the Saints of recent years. There are some reasons to get excited. And my favorite, Adam Troutman. Tight ends usually take a year to get used to being in the NFL. Jared Cook's no longer on this team. This is the guy. Last year he had 16 targets, and guess what? He caught 15 of them. This is my underdog pick to be a top 12 tight end. I believe that he'll have 25 targets, and because of the wobbly passes, he'll catch 10 of them. <laughs> I mean, it's a good yeah. call out though. I like yeah. I like you digging deep. Yeah. Uh, dislikes. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off the field first. I dislike what management has done with the New Orleans Saints salary cap situation. They came into this off season having to clear a hundred million dollars in salary, so they've dumped players that they could have used. Um, moving on to the field. <laughs> already questioned the quarterback. I, can Jameis Winston throw more completions than picks? I don't know, man. My lasting image of him is just throwing pick after pick after pick. I, I question their defensive backs. I like Lattimore, but what else, man? I've got New Orleans banging on the door of the Jacksonville Jaguars trying to trade for their cornerbacks, for God's sakes. I mean, the, the, I have... I have more questions for the Saints than I've had in many years. Yeah, I um like you said, Jameis, he is the big question mark for me. Uh is he still the INT machine? And you know, is he all about Jameis? You know, he he likes to play like he's the big the big alpha on the field and and all that and likes to beat his chest a bunch. Uh but the reality is is he forces the ball in a lot. Uh, I don't know that, uh, you know, taking the time and sitting behind Drew Brees has really taught him much, but I guess we're going to find out. Um, I just don't think he's going to uh, to pan out like New Orleans is going to hope that, that, that he would. What are your concerns, Park? I know we're talking about Jameis. I don't know that Jameis is the starter. Mm. Uh, it, I, I think it honestly is probably going to be Taysom Hill. But, you know, we've got Michael Thomas hurt for a while. Uh they don't have a whole lot of people to throw to, so they could run that experiment for a bit. But more li- than likely, I think it's both. I think we're seeing Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill. I wouldn't touch this team with a 10-foot fantasy stick. I mean, it's just – I don't care who starts. This sentence I'm about to say is true. The Saints now have starting at quarterback one of the least efficient quarterbacks in recent football history, period. And it's true with either one of them. Taysom, I mean, I don't even – he looks like he's punting the ball when he throws it down deep. And Jameis, he joined the 30 for 30 club two years ago, 30 interceptions, 30 touchdowns. This isn't a indie situation where they're going to, you know, going from Peyton to Andrew Luck. The Saints are about to be the Aints. <laughs> nice. I completely agree. Um, I have them regressing so much. They're not touching the playoffs this year, gentlemen. 
Um, I, I initially had them at six wins. Um, I gave them a little bit of an uptick because I don't believe in some of the teams in the NFC South. I'm going to officially go eight and nine. Yeah, I have got a lot of scribbles here on this record. <laughs> I mean, I I started with seven wins, and then I went to nine wins, and I think I'm going to finally settle at eight wins because uh, just I, I just like you said, I just don't, don't have a lot of it. I don't have a lot of confidence no. in there. I don't think Parker believes it either, right? No, I don't. I had him initially at six, but I do believe in Sean Payton. I do believe. I don't believe in Taysom Hill, but I believe in the gimmickiness that'll win him a couple of games. I've got him at seven and ten. Yeah, I think all Dead of last. us were initially thinking lower than what we went with. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then we get to the Super Bowl champs, folks. Uh, Tampa Bay Bucks last year were 11-5. and five. Um, You know, Parker, go ahead and start with what you like about this team. Time. If you remember last year, they had no time. They didn't get to practice until they formed their own thing on a different field. But, like, you know, officially practice. The Bucs started the year off not great. I mean, everybody's, oh, they ran the, won the Super Bowl. But y'all remember at the beginning, it was like, is this going to work? They started off three and two. Right. Um, they're, But they are one of the few Super Bowl teams to literally return every single important piece. They didn't lose anything that I'm aware of that nope. means anything to the team. Yeah. They brought back all five starting offensive linemen, and they even upgraded their backups. And this is for the best quarterback in the history of football. I don't know how Tom Brady – I mean, I'm not going to say he's not good, but, God, he, he looks into the most unbelievable situations. <laughs> uh, but the time, I, that's that's my favorite thing about him. Yeah. Uh, I I mean, yeah, the band is back together, you know. Is this another repeat year potentially? Uh, they finished uh, the, the year last year with an eight-game <clears throat> winning streak. And, you know, I mean, Tom Brady, good grief. What is there not to like? Unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately for them, I guess. Uh, 11 players caught at least one touchdown pass. I mean, good grief. That's spreading the ball around. Uh, Gronk, I mean, good grief. They, they, they've got a lot of weapons here. Um, but, yeah, a lot to like for sure. So uh, Tom Brady will just continue playing this sport until he gets bored. I don't think we're, that we're going to see something like uh, – Hey, he's just, his arm is gone. I'm not sure that we'll ever see that out of this guy. He's just going to have to get bored with playing football. I believe. I like that. They're the Super Bowl champs. Parker, they return all a L L 22 starters. That's 11 on offense, 11 on defense. Goodness gracious. They were second in scoring at 30.8 points per game led by their offensive coordinator, Byron Leftwich. (laughs) And how does he not get one interview? I, you know, I. That's a great question. I mean, come great on. Great question. No pub. I like it though. Not at all. What? What? Are there any concerns? Did you write Blake? Did you write down any questions? Any concerns about a team that returns all twenty-two starters? I don't have anything written down. But the only thing that I think of is, you know, a lot of the so the older quarterbacks they don't lose they actually get better mentally as they go on uh because the the game slow has slowed down for them so much in their mind however what tends to happen is they have trouble recovering if there happens to be an injury and i kind of get concerned with brady the more he ages it gets older i mean he doesn't really age like everybody else too is the other problem but if he happens to come across an injury come across an injury i'm wondering what his timeline for return is going to be like, or is is it just going to be too much for him? And is he just going to say, you know what, this is it? And then what is that going to leave him with? I mean, and that's not really much of a concern. I mean, that's that's me making something up, really. What do you got, Parker? You got any questions or concerns about Tampa Bay? I do. While I put down time. For my like, it's another one word answer for dislike. It's history. The last team to win back to back Super Bowls was in 2004. It's really difficult to do. I will say the caveat that that was Tom Brady. <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you know? But the last three teams to try to make that happen the 2020 Chiefs, the 27 pa- or 2017 Patriots, the 2014 Seahawks, all lost. It takes a bit of luck, even if you're the best team in the league, to win the Super Bowl. 
it's really difficult to have that luck break for you twice. Does it happen again? We'll talk about that later, but it's just inc- one of the hardest things to do. It's not like winning an NBA championship back to back. Winning the Super Bowl back to back is incredibly difficult. Yeah, I wrote down for a question mark. Former Jag Leonard Fournette playoff Lenny as they're telling naming this dude. Here's what makes me question it. I don't like his attitude. Uh, even went so much as he was almost cut by the coach. Mm. The coach literally just got up in his face and said, look, you're either going to be on board with this ship and come with us or you're out. Yep. I mean, we remember guys cause we're sec fans. This guy is an sec legend. Yeah. Superstar out of LSU, mm-hmm. but something in the mind is, is just not there. Right. Uh, we, they can't, they can't afford to have a cancer, even if it's just the one. Yeah. And he's not even listed as one of the 22 starters. He shouldn't be. The, he's the, not. The best, the, it's Ronald best, Jones. It should be Ronald Jones. I it don't is. understand why they like – I know he was great in the playoffs last year, but it blows my mind why they continue to give this guy chances. Yeah, that's that's a question mark yeah. for me. You cannot let a an attitude or a cancer infiltrate that locker room. Yeah, because, I mean, with teams like this where there are so few downsides, it's like when – if there is, if it's one thing, that one thing becomes everything because it's all there is to focus on. Mm. That, if you want, now going down a different road of dislike, since you brought it up, Bradley, if you yeah. want to talk about cancers in the locker room, there's a big one sitting there that could create a major problem any day if he wanted to, and that is Antonio Brown. Yeah, Blake is pointing at it right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, A B is a ticking time bomb. Yep, we'll see what happens. Somehow he's been kept in check so far, I guess, for, for the most part, anyway. I mean, Brady has a lot to do with that, I believe. Yeah. He did punch a Titans player in the face the other day at practice. Yeah, well, they probably like that. I mean, he's almost one of those guys that kind of just runs interference for, for everybody else. He just takes all the, the negative attention because he's just so used to it. Um, I'm going 13-4, and four and they represent the NFC South. 12-5. and five. Win in the NFC South. 12 and 5 as well. They come in first, but I do think, I really think Carolina's close on their heels. Wow. All right. Okay. That was the NFC South. We're going to jump right into our division, the AFC South. We're going to start in Houston. Not much going on down there. A few massages, <laughs> hiring oh. old coaches. Oh, boy. Houston Texans were 4 and 12 last year. Uh, anybody want to start? Because I don't want to start. Uh, with likes, likes. Um, they've got plenty of uh petroleum products down there that they could throw on top of the team and light on fire. <laughs> That's uh, they're literally going to be at the bottom of the barrel in every statistical category that you can name, other than one. Most punts per game. This team is uh, literally. I'm the best thing about this team is that my team gets to play them twice a year. They will be yes. garbage for the foreseeable future. Yes, they are the Vanderbilt of the AFC South. Hey, that means that my team's not the Vanderbilt of the AFC South. I don't even think it's close. Um, so really what I'm going to go? Let's see. Like, like, like. What do I like about Houston? Um, I mean, I think the the bull little emblem looks pretty cool. The red, white, and blue bull. <laughs> Man, that's man, um, we're we're reaching here. I, I like that. Uh, I like that they don't have a quarterback. I like that they don't have seemingly a head coach. <laughs> I uh, maybe I like their stadium. I don't know. I mean, what are, what are we even talking about here? I mean, can we please move on from this dumpster no, fire? No. I want to move into the dislikes so we can talk about All right, about let's how, go to the dislikes. Oh, yeah, the dislikes are so much more fun. Let's go. Yeah. Dislike. Go, go, go. Uh, dislikes. Let's see. They had a terrible coach last year. Their organization is terrible. Um, <laughs> their fans don't give a flying F. Uh, I think um, everybody in the NFL would be really just okay with them never existing. Um, Deshaun Watson, he's, he's done with that place as far as I'm concerned. And it's just an, it's a dumpster fire. That's the only thing I could say about it. 
This team has the oldest roster in the NFL. They have the oldest first-time coach in the NFL. Bill O'Brien is gone. The decisions are supposed to be better. <laughs> There's so many things that are just mind-numbingly stupid about this team. Their first pick in the NFL draft wasn't until pick number 67. <laughs> they took Davis Mills. That's quarterback. horrible. Yes. This, this, it may be one of the dumbest draft picks of all time. And let me tell you why. They're going to be dreadful this year, right? They're going to be bottom two in the league dreadful. The only wrong pick to make at that selection was quarterback because no matter what, they're going to be in the top three picks next year where they're going to take their franchise quarterback. So it's all those holes on the team where they could address it next year. They literally took the only position that they shouldn't take. I'd rather them take kicker than quarterback at that part. Mm. It it doesn't get any worse for me in the entire NFL. Um, trading away the draft mm-hmm. that's your future, right? Yeah, as Parker said, you, you may as you may as well just trade it away that other pick because you mean, didn't do a damn thing with it. That's my thing. If you're you gonna, just tossed it away, if you're going to rebuild, you know, trade stuff away for higher picks. <laughs> It just doesn't make any any sense whatsoever is going on. Let, let me ask you this. Would it surprise you if this team won just one game this year? No, it wouldn't. They're over under right now at Vegas at three and a half, and you have to lay more money to bet the under. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I guess I'd still be shocked if they only won one game because that's absolutely dreadful. I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, and I'm not saying that I believe that they're going to win. I'm going four games this year. I'm going four games, and I think I'm probably a, a lot more bullish than than some. Parker, Parker, cut that in half. Parker, <laughs> Parker look, uh, look, man, look what I have written. They're going to win two games. Blake can read it. Yep. Two and 15. I have two and 15, and honestly, I don't even feel confident about it. But I would be surprised if they won one or zero. I mean, that's just, yeah, that's just damn Detroit horrible. They're going to, not to jump into Jack, they're going to pull a Jacksonville. They're going to, they know they're awful. They're going to win one or two games, and it's going to come from up above to lose. To tank it. it, Then people are going to be out because of the mysterious yep. injuries, things like that. They they are capable of winning four games, even as bad as they are. You just the Damn. randomness of the NFL, but they're not going to. They are going to tank this season. They're going to win. I, I would, I would take uh, one or two games. That's what I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going. I mean, see, my thing is, is I think they're so bad that they can't even tank right. <laughs> That's my thing is so they the can't Jets. even do it right. You're talking about the Jets. Thank you, Jets. We'll talk yeah, about my team exactly. a little bit later on. But uh, before we move away from this team, I wanted to hear your thoughts on, is Deshaun Watson going to stay? Is he going to go? Is he going to play? Does anyone care? Parker? I don't think he ever plays again for the Texans. Uh, I think he'll be traded. Philly seems to be the landing spot. Again, I would hard push if I was a Cleveland Brown. I know they got Baker. They're going to give him a stupid long contract. Uh, it, uh Philly it seems to be the one that makes the most sense. I don't think you ever see him play again for the Texans. I don't think he can. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. I think that he thinks that that place is toxic. I think he thinks that the, the city hates him, and why would you ever want to be in a city that hates you as much as they appear to? I do think that he will never play again for the Texans, and I'm borderline worried about his career, period, at this yes. point. Yeah, like, uh, it's, it's weird, though, you know, because, I mean – you think, you know, rewind a couple of years ago, it's like, man, that Deshaun Watson's like, man, golly. He's a good dude. Yeah. He's like, he's like the guy that you, you hear about that he's donating money to, you know, folks that work in the stadium to try to keep them afloat during COVID and all this. And then all this other stuff comes out and it's just like, man, it's just. And it is not just for money at this point, these, these lawsuits, they're criminal lawsuits. He's got yeah. a grand jury gets going to be called against this guy. Yeah. It, now, if that happens, I'm, I'm with Brad, and he will never play again. In the, in the, the NFL, NFL probably won't allow him to play no. if he if if he gets indicted in some way. No, I could see the worst case scenario is he's done, which mm-hmm. I can't believe that. Um, done, done. I think the best case scenario is in some weird warped world of mine. Darnold tanks. He gets to go back home 
to the Carolina Panthers. Mm. Maybe yeah. not this year, but maybe next year. Yeah, it could be the case. I, I had a uh, best ball draft the other day. I took him in the last round, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Man. Just well, we talked a lot about the Texans just now. We can talk about a lot of, of none all of it was these. not none of it was good, but we but, talked a lot. Hey, guess what? None of it was written down. I either. know I've we nothing. are. This is completely off the cuff here. Completely so, off the cuff. But we love the AFC South. Yeah. Let's go to another team, Indianapolis Colts. Last year they were eleven and five. They made the postseason. They lost a pretty tough game there in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody want to start with anything you like about the dreaded Colts, the hated I'm op- Colts? I'm optimistic. I'm really down on this team, but I'm optimistic about their offensive line. And I mean, I'm saying optimistic. I don't think they're great. Uh, they lost some fo- folks. They signed Eric Fisher, who's not going to be ready till what October, November. When's he going to be healthy? It's going to be cool. maybe a Halloween trick or treat. Quentin Nelson. Maybe the best lineman in the league. He's he's hurt too. I know he's extra trending. Bone in he, his foot. He's trending. So I mean, the O line may be good in the second half of the season, but I think they could get dig themselves such a hole that it may not matter. Yeah. The, I, so the offensive line. I know that sounds like a dislike, but that's honestly one of my that bigger likes about them. If you've got it, uh, expand more about the digging a hole because if I'm not mistaken, I believe the beginning of their schedule is pretty tough, right? Do you have that up? I think that's hey, give me a moment. I can. I, yeah. I, um, I, while you're pulling that up, I'm going to say, uh, I like their defense. I mean, I like the, I like the makeup anyway of their mm-hmm. defense. Um, I liked their offensive line, but now there's questions about health. There's question about age. There's questions about what's behind this offensive line, which I'm going to save that for my dislikes. Um, I believe I do like their running back. I like Taylor just fine. I mean, he's not this Taylor like the jersey I'm wearing. Mm. No. But um, did you find that schedule? No, nah, my internet. Nah, yeah, internet and Captain internet. Parker's been a little weird. I yeah. think that they – I do know it's difficult. I believe it starts in those first six games. I think that they have the Rams uh, in there. Titans. I, I, mm-hmm. I'd have you kind of making it up, but I believe that they have the Rams and the 49ers. Not 49ers, the Rams. Actually, I think they have the Rams 49ers and, and the uh, – oh, my gosh. Lincoln. Yeah, I um, I, 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 I like their I, – I really do like their offensive line. I mean, it, it's kind of been something that – Oh, you know, help I turn my wife out. The uh, the Colts have always just, particularly here in the last five or five or eight years, uh, have been known for. I mean, I'm not. Guys, really... I've, I've got their spe- ske- schedule for okay. you there. What you got? Uh, they start off. Let me give you their first seven here. Seahawks. They start off with Loss. Rams, Loss. Titans, Loss. Dolphins, Win. Ravens. Loss. That's their first five. They're one and four. Yeah, one and four. Yeah, it's it's a tough start there for him for sure, for sure. Let's talk about why it may be tough. Does anyone believe in this quarterback situation? I do not. I absolutely do not. I mean, who they got? They got Wentz now. I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I, <laughs> I mean, they. I mean, you just ever since old dipshit uh, retired at the age of nineteen or whatever the hell he was. Well, that was old um, Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck, yeah. I mean, old man Luck. Uh, there's kind of – they've kind of – you know, they've been kind of running roughshod over the the uh, the AFC South, it seems like, up until here recently when the Titans have kind of been pushing them a little bit here. But uh, I don't think that, you know, they tried the Phillip Rivers thing last year. Now they're going for Carson Wentz. Uh, I, I just – I'm not a believer in Carson Wentz. Um He's just, I don't know. He just seems like a big goof to me. He's going to have, he's going to be able to stay upright, I think, because of the offensive line being as good as they are. But uh, I think that what that'll end up doing is it'll probably just put on display how inept or how average he is as a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I don't like it. I don't like Carson Wentz. I don't like now that the uh, the question marks are popping up with the O line. I still have faith in their defense until they prove me otherwise. But 
It, it's a tough team to get over the hump, though, man. I mean, this this yeah. overall organization and team has been a thorn in it our has. AFC South side. It's just been annoying, hasn't yeah. it? I've never really looked at their team and said, man, that team is just a force to be reckoned But they're about. always there. It's just always a team that, for whatever reason, in the AFC South is just hard to get through for some reason. You know, pins, have, pins it's on. because they've got maybe the best GM in football and one of the best coaches in football. It's why they're always in the right situation. They're never going to be like a three-win team just because of those two guys. Um, and speaking of of wins, I don't believe in wins at all. I think it's awful. There's a bunch of statistics out there. The year that he should have won or could have won MVP before he got hurt and they went, went on to win the Super Bowl with Foles, mm-hmm. that just proved – I'm not going to go through them all, but they just kind of proved that he was kind of fraudulent in that a lot there's, of luck was involved. There's in that it. word fraudulent. Uh, it's not, I, I don't care if he plays or not, if he's hurt or not. I, I think he's bad. I don't care. I, I don't see – there's a lot of buzz about this team. I don't really understand understand why. The one thing I would do – we'll never know the answer to this question, but I would love to just be a fly on the wall to know how many times the GM over the last year has called Andrew Luck. And said, "Hey, man, what do you think? What What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, uh, that probably is their best bet at quarterback at this point, outside of Deshaun Watson, maybe coming and knocking. Um, I, I I think this team they got a tough go of it at first, but uh, I think they're actually going to they're going to continue to be a thorn in the side of the AFC South. I still still think they're going to win eleven games. Yeah, until proven otherwise. I can just pencil them in for 10 and see what happens. I know 10 and seven doesn't sound that great with the added 17th game, but it is what it is. I'm going to go 10 and seven and they, they make it into an expanded playoff field. What do you think Parker? I think pass catchers, by the way, on this team are a major problem. People don't, we talk about the offensive line and the defense. They have T Y Hilton old Michael Pittman, Pittman always hurt unproven Paris Campbell. Their best receiver might be Zach Pascal. I'm so glad they didn't, but it blows my mind they didn't go after Julio Jones because I don't believe in any of their pass catchers. I don't even care if it's Andrew Luck out there. I think they go eight and nine. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm, as a Titans fan, I like hearing that. <laughs> well, as a Titans fan, do you like to hear about this next team? Last year, they went one and 15, earned the number one overall pick. The Jacksonville Jaguars. Blake, is there anything that you like about your division rival, Jacksonville? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I actually – I think Trevor Lawrence actually is a good NFL upcoming, up-and-coming quarterback. I think he has potential to be pretty good. Um, I have – well – I'll just say this. I think Trevor Lawrence has the potential and he has the makeup to be able to do something special with his career. Uh, But, I mean, he's playing for a team that is doing some experiments, in my opinion, with the head coaching uh, situation. And uh, we'll get into that in the dislikes. But, uh, I mean, as a Titans fan, yeah, I love playing the Jacksonville Jaguars because that, you know, Duval is our home away from home. All right, Parker, you got any optimistic views? And sorry if you if I drop for a minute, guys, I'm breaking up a little bit. But I do have some likes to this team, as you probably wouldn't have thought, but I do. I love their skill positions. I think they're loaded at skill positions. This is the opposite of Indy. Uh, I, I like James Robinson, Travis Etienne, DJ Shark, LaViscus Chenault. I am a Chenault truther and think he could shine this year. And with the best free agent wide receiver signing in the – free agency this year is Marvin Jones better than Kenny Galladay. I love Marvin Jones. and think he's going to lead this team in receptions. Uh, so yeah, they've great at skill positions. Yeah. The likes would be um, running backs, Robinson, ETN wide receivers. I believe when you talk about Jacksonville, just about with anything, I think everything is underrated with this team. So I'm going to mention Chark, Chenault, Marvin Jones. I mean, I can list seven other receivers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what I can't list? I mean, I can, but no one will know what this means. Tight ends, 
Yeah. Tight end. What what is it? I mean, they tried the Tebow experiment, right? Yep. I, I predicted right when they signed it that it wasn't gonna happen. But I still had people saying, Hey, how's Tebow? How are Tebow gonna make the team? I am so happy that he's cut. I don't have to field those questions anymore. Litter he wasn't gonna make the team anyway. Um they're going with Chris Manhurts, folks. This was this was a free agent signing from Baltimore. He was rated P PFF graded number one as the uh, best run blocking tight end. He's not known for catching anything at all. Uh, but they have James O'Shaughnessy, maybe if he can stay healthy to try to catch those passes. Honestly, I think they'll use Travis Etienne as their tight end. I mean, not as a quote unquote tight end, but you know what I'm saying. They may have Robinson right. and Etienne on the field at the same time. Yeah, uh, and you mentioned something that I'll just segue right into my dislikes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you did. The so Tebow, for me, it's not really about Tebow. This is my thing. This is an indication to me of how not serious they are when they do shit like this. Whenever you're the coach that you hire calls his buddy that he won national championships with in college, Tim Tebow. Uh, just say, hey, you want to come? Come on, man. Really? At, at this level, it's a business. Why are you calling somebody who is playing professional baseball, wasn't particularly good at quarterback when he played in the NFL, and now you want him to come and try out for a position that he's never played at a high level? For me, that's gimmicky. That's stupid. Why would you even entertain that idea? It, it clearly shows a lack of judgment on Urban Meyer's part, and it shows me that he's not ready for this position either. I think that's a huge problem for them. And it worries uh, me for Trevor Lawrence's development. Yeah, we, we talked about, because there's so many things. We talked about in an earlier one, uh, different positions you can be in, like Trey Lance. I landed in a perfect spot in 49ers. It worries me about Trevor Lawrence because of Urban Meyer. Um and I like Trevor Lawrence, but he's already talking about, I mean, this is his words. He's coming out and talking how big of an adjustment this is for him. And that he didn't, he didn't look very comfortable in that first game that I know preseason, but he, nope. all the other rookies did. How many times did he get sacked? He got sacked a, a few times, didn't Two. he? Two times. Didn't, yeah. didn't have that many, that many snaps. Which really takes me into my dislike. I cannot stress my dislike enough for this head coach. I think urban Meyer is a, Terrible head coach for the NFL. I think he's a terrible human being. I'm not even going to go into that. Uh, he he won't make an, a good NFL co coach because he wants to control everything. You can't do that in NFL. He's saying crazy things like Gardner Minshew is competing for the starting job. And he's splitting first team reps at practice with Trevor Lawrence. You can't do that. I know he's trying to up his trade value, but it's not going to work. Nobody be nobody believes that. You've got to get him the snaps. He's, he's thinking and acting like a college coach. It may fly for a few games in the league. They have the second easiest schedule through the first six games. They're going to sneak up. They're going to bite some people. They're going to get some wins. But eventually, the players won't respect that type of leadership. They know who's the leader in the locker room. And defenses are going to figure him out. And, and Blake just said it. The top off my college argument he brought in tim tebow it just he has a basic college offense this is i don't think debatable like you can go back and watch it he runs heavy uh formations power formations which is why he signed the tight end that he signed the minute he left ohio state and ryan day took over overnight they became a more vertical offense this horizontal power run offense in the nfl is not going it's not going to work and the new GM has hired a college coach in the past, Chip Kelly. Mm -hmm. He did. It didn't work. It thing. didn't. It didn't work out for for him either. I just. This is the only team in the bottom three in both scoring offense and defense last year. Mm. I just don't, don't see how Urban Meyer. I like some of their players. Don't give really away my players. dislikes. You're going to jump into my dislikes. I, I I just don't see how Urban Meyer gets them over the hump. Uh, it, yeah, the players I, I really don't have a problem with, it's Urban Meyer. Yeah, I am 100% in agreement there. It's not the personnel. It's the person that's directing the personnel at this point. All right, let's uh, before I go into specifics about dislikes, let's talk about personnel, okay? I need to educate both of you a little bit. Uh, I'm not saying that I love Urban Meyer. Mm. It's it good because we don't. <laughs> it appears to me 
as the Jaguar fan that uh, maybe, just maybe, he's not going with the dictator approach. This gentleman has hired the most individuals on any coaching staff in the NFL. You know why? Because he doesn't, he's never coached in the NFL. The most, he's probably got 38 coaches. He's just admitting that he has no 38 coaches. He's Uh, he's got an offensive staff that's coming straight down from Seattle, which I like, right? What, What else would I want talking to Trevor Lawrence right now than the OC and the quarterbacks coach from Seattle? And the guy that brought Tim Tebow in. And I'm, I'm talking about Joe Cullen. We touched on him earlier, right? Love Joe Cullen. But the issue about bringing in the staff. But staff, the biggest staff in the NFL, the largest. Yes, but they're still, obviously, they, they're they still going to do, in my opinion, Myers' offense. They're splitting reps with Minshew. They brought in Tebow. He says he doesn't know who the starter is. It's obviously got Myers' handprint on this and not the Seattle staff is my, is my argument. I believe that's true. I mean, yeah. this is Urban Myers – handprint, but I don't want to dismiss the fact that he and Shad Khan have hired the most assistant coaches. I think they had to. This is a big, a huge undertaking. When you have a team going one in 15, we talked about earlier on other podcasts about a whole culture shift because of what was happening in the offices with Tom Coughlin. Just go back and ask Jalen Ramsey what was happening in the offices. I mean, this was not, and I'm not even talking about football anymore. I'm just talking about how people were being treated. This is a huge undertaking. Urban Meyer would never be able to do it by himself anyway. He's got enough coaching staff to help. Um, I do not like the prospects of their defense. They've spent a lot of money. Coming into free agency, I think they had the second most money available to spend. They spent a lot of money on defense. They've spent some draft capital on defense. Um, They're going to need every bit of it to step up. They're absolutely one of the worst, and I hate it because I love defense so much. They couldn't stop the run. Blake, you could take it for five yards against this defense. Um. I'm still worried. Um, I'm worried. I know that they're going to try to, they're going to try to disguise a lot of this Parker. They're going to switch to a three, four defense this year. Mm-hmm. They're going to have Josh Allen at uh, Josh Allen standing up. Oh, oh, oh. can, can, I, can yeah. I piggyback off that real yeah, quick? Go ahead. So they're going to switch to a three, four defense, which means their cornerbacks are going to have to lock down. Correct. Better. Why on God's green earth are they shopping CJ Henderson? It's it's a good question because that was the Saints that I was talking about earlier yeah. on this podcast that they're they're looking that Henderson their first round pick from last year. Yes, ninth overall. He played eight games last year. And so they're uh, one of the likes. I know we I skipped over. We're kind of jumping around now that we're getting into some meat and potatoes yeah, of the Jags and tight. No, 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 no. This is good because I'm okay with going this way. Um, they brought in Shaquille Griffin, cornerback from Seattle. I, I like it. I think that he can at least cut the field potentially in half. No, it's a good signing. Uh, Rayshon Jenkins at safety. I mean, I guess I like the signing, but I don't know. I, I, I'm so – too many questions to make me feel yippee about them. Uh, I'm glad that they're not the Texans. Um. I'm okay. I'm all right with the I'm all right with the Tim Tebow thing. Look, this was the 90th guy on a 90 man roster. I don't know why there's so much hatred for this you know Tim no Tebow. It's not a hatred for Tim Tebow. It's a hatred for the decision that was made to waste time. With something like that, that it's stupid. But couldn't we say that if about everybody knew he was a person? No, yes. you can't. This is a guy that hadn't been playing football for the last two or three years. Why would you do that? Yeah. And he, you're asking him to come play a position he's never played. It doesn't matter. It never mattered. It never did. Exactly. Correct. That's he my was point. never going to make the team. Any, so why? Then did why ask him to come 
try out. Why did everyone get their panties in a wad over Tim Tebow on a practice squad? Because it has nothing to do with Tebow. It has to do with the decision making of mm. the head coach. Exactly. I think y'all are exactly. I have nothing. Exactly I have no, I have, this is one hundred percent nothing to do with Tebow. If you wanted to, I would have been fine if Tebow would have been the team chaplain or some assistant coach. They brought in thirty-eight of them. Why not make it one more? If you wanted something good in the locker room, and we're, we were talking earlier about locker room presence, and need to get in, get, get. I don't want to go into all the detail. I can, but turning over a new leaf, a new attitude, <laughs> moving on. Um, Urban Meyer is not a good locker room guy. Urban Meyer has had problems at, you know this, at problems at Florida, problems at Ohio State. Heck, he's had problems in Jacksonville with coaches he tried to hire from Ohio State. I just think it is a – I wish they would have gone and got Joe Brady, you know? Um I just think they he is going to retire with some health issue after, you know, 24 games. I feel it. But they couldn't, though. And you know why. This team is borderline forgotten. The Jacksonville Jaguars cannot make a blah hire. Right? So they had to go with the big name. They had to. No other choice. They had to. Urban Meyer. That would have been a big hire. No. That name is not known by the majority. Um, look, I believe in their ownership. I love Shad Khan. I love Tony Khan. I believe that they did identify the the root of the problem. I do. It, I do think you're right there. Is it fixed overnight? Doubt it. Is it fixed with Urban Meyer? Doubt it. I mean, I got to be hopeful though. Jags fan, I got to be hopeful. Sure. Um, I do not believe that this will be that quick. I believe that the AFC South gives them a chance to turn it around quicker than normal. Um, if their defense can do anything else than be last or next to last in the league. I'm praying for an eight-win season. Good Lord. Eight I'm wins? I want to give you one other uh, dislike. I do like their offense. I think it could be sneaky good. You know, it could go from I forgot what the, what was it? What do you know last year? It's like twenty eighth or something, wasn't it? It was pretty bad. Um, it was very I bad. Think, I mean, I think it could be one of the most one of the most improved units of uh, defense or offense or special teams in the league. I really do. I think it could jump to fifteen. 16, which is a massive jump, right? I'll take it, man. I, I want Trevor Lawrence's goal to be Justin Herbert. I want, oh, I you, want, I want him up right now. Yeah, I want him to look, I want his stats to look like that. Mm -hmm. I want the team overall to look like that. Kind of like a just shy of a 500 team, but like on the rise. Let's, let's, let's give him a little kickstart into 2022, but this is not the year too early. The one dislike I give you before my record is that the Jacks last year had one of the healthiest offensive lines. It was one of the top 10 as far as health goes. They are the most expensive offensive line in the NFL. But in terms of pass and run block win rate, they were in the bottom seven. You can't have that with the most expensive line in the NFL that ATF turned around. I have them winning seven games. Um, I think they jump up and get some people. This first, These first six games – the schedule is uh, Texans, Broncos, Cardinals, Bengals, Titans, and Dolphins. God, I wish they could just win three, three or four. Just be close to half of those. Uh, they're not beating the Titans. They're not beating the next team we're about to talk about. No. They could definitely be three and three in those games. Well, if they were three and three, that would be half of their total wins that I think they'll get for 2021. <laughs> I think they're winning six games. Yeah. I can see that. I'm going eight and nine and some hope, but uh, I guess we'll disagree about the philosophy. I think that their organization knows Urban Meyer cannot do it by himself. I think that they had to make this type of hire because of who they are and where they play professional football. I just got to hope for the best, man. I, I said right when they hired him, I'm like, man, when, when's the when's the sickness coming, Blake? 
<laughs> I mean, this guy's going to lose Parker. He's going to lose more in the preseason, which they only have three games, than he has in how many years in college? Yeah. And he's going to lose more. And th- Jacksonville has played in one postseason in 13 years. Like, it, he is going to literally kill kill this guy to lose this many games. Yeah. yeah. Totally. All right. Let's move on to your Tennessee Titans. Last year they were eleven and five. I like that the uh, I like their offensive makeup. I like their quarterback. I love their running back. He is from Florida. Jacksonville's own. They were fourth in scoring at twenty nine point six points per game. What do you like, Blake? I mean, you rattled it off there, Derrick Henry. Coming off another 2,000-yard rushing season. Ryan Tannehill, nothing flashy. Steady Eddie. You know, he's uh, directing the traffic out there. He's uh, he's a nice, steady, fixed point for the offense. A.J. Brown on one side, Julio Jones on another. The skill players are scary, in my opinion. Uh, scary good uh, for this team. Uh, you know, they lost Corey Davis. I don't think a lot of Titans fans are that upset about that. Yeah, he had some numbers last year out of nowhere whenever they uh, threatened him the, to, to get rid of him for a contract year. Um, I do, I do, I'm gonna miss Janu. <laughs> I'm a big Janu guy, but uh, uh, I've got some, you know, if I'm gonna, uh, I, I really like on the defensive side, uh, Jeffrey Simmons. Harold Landry, uh, uh, who do they, uh, Jayon, they re-signed Jayon. I, I really love Jayon as a coverage guy on the linebacker side of things. He's, he's fast enough to be able to cover guys. Um, he even had some interceptions there and there. Um, uh, I've got some concerns that we'll get into, but, uh, yeah, I, I've, I'm really optimistic this year. Um, yeah, kind of curious to All hear right. what I want to hear with the season ticket holder. What do you like about this team and the makeup? I love so much about this team. How I talked to you about Jacksonville's offense being one of the most improved units in the football, I believe that they'll be number two to the Titans' defense. They're going to go from a historically bad third down conversion. I'm not talking like, oh, they were kind of bad. No, historically bad. The only team in the history of the NFL to give up more than 50% on third down. That is going to change. Like, they could run back the exact same players and do better than that. But we'll get more on the defense in a minute. What I love, piggybacking off what Blake just said, offense. Their offense is unbelievable. Their depth isn't good. But if their starters are playing, they compare with anybody in the league as far as it, on offense. They have the best one-two punch in the NFL when it comes to wide receiver, and I don't think you can argue it. Nope. There may be better one-twos and threes, but just the top two guys – I don't think there's any arguing it. Speaking of offense, we had a historic runner last year, more than 2,000 yards behind a dreadful hurt offensive line. We had three right tackles playing, or three left yep. tackles playing last year. Yep. These guys are back. They upgraded. They signed people. They drafted people. I think the sky's the limit for the offense. I know people are talking about regression. You know what? I'm tired of hearing about it because I've been hearing about regression since T- Tannehill took over, and he hasn't. It just keeps getting better and better and better. If you look back when Ryan Tannehill started to now, and I, this is going to sound insane, but if you compare stats as far as completion percentage and touchdowns, it's him and Patrick Mahomes and nobody else. Yep. It's not even – honestly, he's winning almost every category other than yards and touchdowns. But he runs more yards. He, his completion percentage is, ha- is heavy, is higher. His interceptions are less. I know that's on the back of Derrick Henry, a lot of that in the play action. I'm also not worried about Arthur Smith being gone. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, is it the the quarterback that makes the coordinator, the coordinator makes the, the, the quarterback? We're talking about like Baker Mayfield. You know, you go after coordinator after coordinator, come down to something because you stink. Well, sometimes the coordinator's good because you're good. If you remember, Arthur Smith had six games without, without Tannehill. He was with Marcus Mariota. And me included was call, were calling for his head because it was awful. The minute Tannehill came in, the offense improved. Tannehill is a very good quarterback. This is why I'm so high also on Panthers. Tannehill was gassed. And 
this offense, I really can see them scoring 33 points a game this year. Yeah, it is. I mean, like I said, I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself just because I'm like, good Lord. As a Titans fan, you know, like you said, there, there are folks that talk regression all the time, but as Titan fans, you're looking at it and you're like, my God, we're, I still feel like we're barely scratching the surface. So that's why I kept telling myself last year is, is I felt like we were still just kind of missing some pieces and we're still making it to the playoffs, which is, you know, it's a good feeling. And one thing I forgot to mention, and, and hey, outside of Derrick Henry, I still believe that their next best player, and this isn't a knock on the rest of the players, it's just because this guy is this good at his, his position, is Brett Kern. He's a game changer for them. He flips the field. It doesn't matter where he is. So, I mean, being able to put their defense in a good position uh, and get the ball back in the offense's hands, I think, is a great weapon to have. I would agree. I, yeah, I agree I, I, with the kicking game. Go, for it. go ahead, Park. Oh, I was just uh, – sorry, I couldn't see it. Um, I, I'm such a big Brett Kern fan, Blake. It, was, it just made me laugh at me thinking about those years where we were just god-awful. <laughs> I remember me and my wife, when Kern would come on the field, we'd just cheer. Because it was the only <laughs> thing. That was it. Would be Marcus out there, you know, or or, or Jake Locker or whatever, and, and an awful defense. And then you bring the one bright spot, which would be Brett Kern, and he is top two kicker in the NFL. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, I, look, the Jags have experienced that <laughs> when you're yep. when you're out here cheering for their kickers for God's sakes. Yep, like oh, Lambo. And the punter. <laughs> yeah, what is hey. it? What is this stat I'm reading here? Out of 37 punts, he had 22 inside the 20. All right. That's, so, yeah. So, <laughs> not I bad. Mean, I'll transition then into dislikes because okay. I think that uh, Brett Kern is going to be very uh, important on what Parker is hoping is a turnaround in the defense. I don't like your defense. Um, I think that leaves for, for some optimism to allow the Jacksonville Jaguars to move up in offense because they get to play you twice a year. Um, they were historically bad, as he mentioned, 52% conversion rates on third down. Um, taking a look at their cornerbacks, I've got a 33-year-old three, 33 Jack Rabbit Jenkins. I've got a couple of rookies that can't even practice. Their backs... Their discs are all over the place. And other than Kevin Byard from right here in Middle Tennessee, MTSU, I don't see it, man. I mean, y'all are going to have to tell me if I'm missing something, but I don't I don't see it on defense. Blake, would you like to take this one? I mean, look, uh, I think that, you know, Having Jadavian Clowney, the expectation was just entirely too high for him. I think he was a complete bust. I think um, uh, we paid him what did we pay like ten or four, ten or twelve or fourteen million dollars or something, something ridiculous for him to come in and and act tired all the time when he would have to run after the quarterback twice in, in a series and then have to take a seat. You know, he provided no pr- pressure on the quarterback. Um, it is. I, hey, if you're going to find something to, to poke at, I think it's fair just to, in the history here uh, uh, to say, I mean, they were historically bad last year. So, I mean, it's not it's not like we have a ton to stand on there. But I saying that they were historically bad, I there's zero chance that they're going to be that bad again. So I, I have to believe that there's going to be improvement there. Uh, can they cover? Can their cornerbacks cover? I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, whenever they lost Jayon Brown, that was a huge blow to them because he was their cover linebacker. Um, so I, I, I think that him coming back and being healthy is going to be a huge part of this. Um, and I'm looking for him to bounce back big time. I think the Jayon Brown is massive. Not a lot of people are talking about that. He's a he's a guy that can cover Kelsey. He's these type of guys. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm pulling up a roster so I can go through it with you. The but as far as it goes with cornerbacks, Jack Rabbit Jenkins, yeah, he's old. He's an upgrade. He, he's he's better than than all the guys we cut from last year. I mean, we got six new starters at least, maybe seven on defense. Uh, all the cornerbacks, Butler, he's he was done. Uh, I just just Damn. absolutely blanked on our other cornerback that we just cut from USC. Um, Adori, Adori, thank you, yeah. Adori, not good. Cut. No. Uh, Jenkins is an upgrade. Jenkins played well last year. 
Christian Fulton's playing well at practice. Caleb Farley, prior to contrary, is practicing. Uh, he's out on the field. He's not playing great, but he hadn't played for 18 months. He switched the position four years ago. It is in cons- consensus that if he was healthy, he had been a top 10, the number one cornerback taken off the board, and he is practicing. I think by the time he gets around, he'll he'll be good to go for, for the beginning of the season. Much like Carolina, I am projecting with this defense. They drafted Elijah Molden, who's also playing well. The star right now is a safety, Amani Hooker. He's taken over. The big person I actually don't like is our inside linebacker, Rashawn Evans. It's going to be his last year for the for, with the team. Mm-hmm. But on the line, Jeffrey, think about this. We had the worst pressure rate in the NFL last year. And we have a couple of good players, but then we had nothing. So you could just stop them. Mm-hmm. This line, Jeffrey Simmons. Bud Dupree, Danico Autry, Harold Landry. They've got some legit players up front now. Yep. Much like Jacksonville's offense is going to take a jump, I believe this defense is going to take a jump. And, oh, forget about that. Rashad Weaver, at outside linebacker, pro football focus, the first uh, preseason game, he was the highest rated rookie drafted this year. He had two sacks, something like that, but. If he doesn't have to, you know, sit out because of his court issues, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> I want to, I want to ask you two Titans fans, why does it feel like to me John Robinson keeps getting a pass over and over and over again? Blake mentioned it, <laughs> just Jadavion Clowney. It feels like he's getting a pass, unlike the Tebow thing that cost Jacksonville no money. But this Jadavian Clowney thing last year was a complete and utter disgrace. Well, wow. millions out the no player to show for it. Uh, Why does he keep getting a pass? Hey, uh, okay, so it's bad. Yes, it, it looked bad for sure. But again, what I think you have to consider there is Jadavian Clowney is one of the big enigmas in the NFL as to why he didn't pan out because on paper, the guy has the physical tools to be able to dominate the game on the defensive line. But for whatever reason, his effort level, uh, I don't know if it's his conditioning or whatever, it really hasn't ever played out. You know, maybe when he was opposite JJ Watt, you know, maybe there was something there, but he, he never really seemed to ever want to be the guy on a defensive line to be the edge rusher. Um, So I, I think I think John Robinson does get a pass on that. Now, was he worth ten or however many million that we paid him? Probably not. But uh, I think at the time we really needed a, a an edge rusher, and uh, we had to take what we could get at the time. And before you start, Parker, let yes. me remind both of you: this GM drafted someone that didn't even play in the NFL with their first round pick in Isaiah That's- Wilson. That's actually where I was going to start off with. Um, he has the worst first round pick in the history of the NFL. He's worse yeah. than Ryan Leaf. Mm-hmm. Isaiah Wilson's awful. Uh, yeah. He's had some misses. Everybody's had some misses. I don't. The Javion thing doesn't bother me. Everybody no. was. A lot of people were trying to get the Javion. Yeah. Nobody was trying to get Tim Tebow. Like we thought, we were. We knew what our weakness was last year, and it was a pass rush. And they thought that could change it. So he addressed it. So at least he addressed what he thought could be the concern. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't work out, but it was a a try. My biggest issue with John Robinson, honestly, is this year, and I've voiced this on Twitter pretty vocally. Their fourth round pick this year is not going to make the team. Des Fitzpatrick, receiver out of Louisville, will not make the team, and they traded up to get this guy. In a previous podcast, I talked about Detroit Lions and Amon St. Brown. They could have picked him. He went after that, after their pick, and they wouldn't have had to trade to get him. Overall, though, John Robinson's missed on some early round picks, but he's honestly, he's great in late rounds. I mean, this guy's picked up some, some, some good people. Uh, I mean, I'm just sitting here pulling up his draft pick. Yeah. Isaiah Wilson was bad, but you go back, let's just go back one year. You go back to, to 2019, Jeffrey Simmons, AJ Brown, Nate Davis, all three starters for the team. Oh, Amani Hooker, their first four picks, all major contributors to this team. Yep. I think that, yes, he has some mess-ups here and there. Nobody's 100%. And I'm not saying he, I, I love him, but I I like him. He does do some silly things, but that the fourth-round pick this year is going to make – it's making me crazy. I believe the Titans are going to keep six receivers, and I don't think one of them is going to be their fourth-round draft pick. Yeesh. Isaiah yeah. Wilson, 
Rashawn Evans, Adoree Jackson, Corey Davis, Jack Corey Conklin, Davis is- Jeffrey Simmons. I mean, the majority of that list is gone. They are gone. But if you want to talk about talent, I mean, Corey Davis is that we're very $13 million receiver, number one on the Jets. Jack Coughlin's one of the highest paid tackles. He's the starting right tackle, probably the best one in the league. Jeffrey Simmons is one of the best defensive uh, nose tackles in the league right mm-hmm. now. Uh, I mean, if, yeah, some of them are on the team. They didn't resign and pick up their fifth year. But talent wise, these guys are stars. Yeah, you you draft based on talent. Whether they pan out, that is that is on a player by player basis. And um, I, I think for the most part, you're going to look. You're going to swing and miss sometimes. But you, as long as you're drafting talent, I, I I don't think I don't have a problem with it. I mean, this is the other thing. Do you really – so they were historically bad on defense last year. Got it. Agree. Do you think that they're going to be average this year? Do you I think, think that – Do you think – because if they're just average, they dominate the AFC South. I think that they can be just average and go 11-6 and six and win the AFC South. I think they will be above average, and they're going to go twelve and five. I one can I give you guys one dislike I did not give you, and that's other than Brett Kern special teams. I don't know what this team's doing on special teams. Oh, God, Who's returning yeah. the, kicks? The kicking game. Trying Chester Rogers, yeah, he looked good in the preseason. But this is one thing that we, you know, what we all make fun of Jeff Jeff Fisher on August eighth. You know, it's Jeff Fisher Day eight eight, but. The little things, the, the the special teams, you never had to worry about. And this team, special, the special teams, I am terrified about. Um, uh, their schedule is incredibly difficult, which is why I think they're going to go 11-6. and six. Yeah. Okay. Whenever I'm hearing Ficken is kicking. Woo. He is being – he's being accurate. Accurate. Don't get me wrong. But I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think they will still win it. I mean, they get yeah. to play the Jags and the Texans. That's four of their games. Oh, I think they easily win the division. I just think that they do have a very difficult schedule. There's right. a schedule in the middle there where it is brutal. Totally agree. Okay. So, all right. Yep. So that was the uh, AFC South and NFC South. Do you guys want to transition into some playoff predictions? Super Bowl? Just real quick. Yeah, we can uh, we can definitely talk about it. Let's do it. <clears throat> so traditionally, about what is it, Parker? About fifty percent of the teams, maybe just shy of that turnover. Yep. Um, looking back at all the predictions that I've done with you guys over the span of these podcasts, <laughs> um, I don't quite have it at fifty percent um, churn. So that makes me think that I'm going to be wrong somewhere. Uh, do you uh, see? Do yeah. you see something like like that? Mine look the same. I, I just don't see a whole lot of teams jumping up this year and making big uh, leaps and bounds changes. I see some teams on that upper echelon, you know, shuffling a lot, but I don't see you know the Troy Lions come out and win in ten games. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, it's not happening. I've got. Uh, I, I went chalk and I went Tampa Bay and Kansas City, both in the number one seeds in the NFC. I've got uh, the Rams at the number two seed and uh, AFC. I've got Baltimore at the number two seed. Um, I think the two new teams in the NFC uh, will be San Francisco and Minnesota. Uh, that means that the Saints and Chicago are out. And the two new teams that I have in the AFC playoff bracket I've got the Chargers and the Miami Dolphins, which eliminates uh, who is that? Cleveland and Pittsburgh are out. I think it's fair to say. I, I think I think the Chargers are trending in the right direction. I think they could really, really make some noise this year. I'm kind of excited to see how that turns out for for those guys. Parker, you got any initial playoff thoughts when you look at it from a high level view? Uh, yeah, I believe it's about top two seats here are AFC, NFC. I mean, I've got the Chiefs. 
purely because of their scheduling, really, and they're the Chiefs at, at number one seed. I don't think that's any shocker. And then my top seed, though, in the NFC is a little different. I've got the Rams. Yeah. I think Matthew Stafford, I know you're not high on him. I think this guy changes the game. I really do. I think he's an MVP candidate. Uh, I, I'm very high on the Rams, although I do have three 12 and 5 teams in the NFC. I do have the Rams at tiebreaker. And then at number two in the AFC, I have the Titans. Okay. Yeah, I got the Titans at number three in the AFC. Yeah, I've got them at two. Um, so sticking in the NFC, <laughs> I wrote out my little playoff chart, circled game by game. Um, you guys don't have to do it to this extent, but I had Minnesota at the Rams. The Rams winning that game. I had San Fran at Green Bay, which is a matchup of the six versus the three seed. And I had San Francisco beating a dysfunctional Green Bay team on the road. Seattle at Washington. Seattle wins that game as well as a road team, um, which brings us to the next wave of NFC playoff games. I've got uh, San Fran at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay wins at home. Seattle at the Rams. I'm predicting right now, this is where they take the monkey off the back. Wow. Seattle goes into LA, wins that game, and then they have to meet up with Tom Brady. I got Seattle at Tampa for the NFC. What do you guys think for the NFC? Well, I didn't do it anywhere near that. Uh, I've got Rams and Tampa Bay. Parker, who do you think is going to be the NFC? Would you say, uh, Blake, you said Rams and Tampa? Mm-hmm. And I, and I, uh, I think I think Tampa Bay is going to take it, though. NFC going down from one to seven. I've got uh, the Rams, Tampa Bay, Green Bay, Washington, San Fran, Seattle, and the Panthers. Okay. I don't go. I'm not going to go game by game here, but I do think the 49ers will knock off Tampa Bay, and the NFC Championship will be Ooh, the Rams versus a pissed off Aaron Rodgers. Wow! Whoa, boy! Woo. So I have Seattle at Tampa, and I have circled. Mm, I can't even see. You got so much shit written down here. Oh, there it goes. He's got Seattle. I'm predicting the Seattle Seahawks to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Mm. It definitely could happen. They've got that new offensive coordinator there that Russ is going to have a stupid, ridiculous year. Uh, Chris Carson's healthy. <sighs> does does Jamal Adams make that defense better? It could happen. No okay. game. <laughs> no okay. So you got Tampa. Blake's got Tampa. Mm-hmm. You got Tampa representing them. I've song. got Seattle and Parker's got the Rams. the Rams. All right. I like it that we're different. Yeah. All right. Let's move over to our favorite, the AFC here. So we all kind of like Kansas City, right? I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. I believe they're probably everyone's number yeah. one seed. We're very close with yeah. the uh, Tennessee thing. Um, I've got from one to seven, I've got Kansas City at the one seed, Baltimore at the two seed, the Tennessee Titans at the third seed, Buffalo Bills, the Colts somehow are still in there. I can't, just can't believe that, but they are. Then the Chargers and the Dolphins. Um, I've got every single home team winning in the first round. I've got Miami losing to Baltimore. I've got the Chargers losing to the Titans. And I've got the Colts again losing to Buffalo this year. The That brings us to Buffalo at Kansas City. Kansas City wins at home. Tennessee at Baltimore. Baltimore again spanks the Titans. Which brings me to my prediction. Baltimore at Kansas City AFC Championship game. Who do you think's in the championship game? That's going to be Kansas City and the Tennessee Titans this year. I think that the Titans are very much just throwing gasoline on what was a very contentious rivalry with Baltimore um, in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And I think uh, that's going to be something to watch, by the way, in the future. Um, But I believe that the Titans actually will fall to the Kansas City Chiefs and the Kansas City Chiefs will represent the AFC. What's your AFC playoff outlook, Parker? AFC going from one to seven. I have removed the Steelers and the Colts from the playoffs. They will not make it. I've got the Chiefs, the Titans, the Dolphins as a three seed, Browns, Ravens, Bills, Chargers. I, in the AFC championship game, guys, I really try to look at this not as a fan, as of numbers and everything. I've got Titans and KC. Yep. 
And we talked earlier about Tampa Bay, and my one thing I didn't like about them was history. It's hard to win the Super Bowl twice. Do you know what's harder? Going to a Super Bowl three times. Buffalo. Exactly. That's the <laughs> last time that's happened, right? All right. So history tells us, and I like to bet on history, that that's not going to happen again. I have the Super Bowl, the Rams versus the Titans. Whoa, oh, we've seen man. that Super Bowl before. Golly, that would I know. talk about a storyline. <laughs> Come on. Wow. And, and, that, and, and Blake, that's another one of my arguments. It kind of lines up perfectly. The NFL storylines always work, right? Like yeah. somehow Tom Brady's there. Somehow Tom Brady's going to break the all time passing record this year when he is playing in a game in New England. Like the storyline somehow <laughs> always amazing. All right. works. Hey, so, my, my older brother said that this NFL is just as fake as WWE wrestling <laughs> with the storylines. He says it's just as the fix is in. It um, could be. I'm going. I hope uh, it's in for my team. All right, I'm going Baltimore at Kansas City. I guess that is the swing game, right? That we yeah. all agree on is the Tennessee Baltimore. Yeah, it really is. I think I'm going Baltimore at Kansas City. And much like Parker's thinking, it's hard to keep representing winning, winning, winning. I'm going Baltimore. Wins the AFC with a matchup of Seattle versus Baltimore in the Super Bowl. Jeez. That's a, I feel if, like if that Baltimore, is. If, if Baltimore doesn't do something like that this year, I think we see a big change next year. Yeah, they you could this, be right. A whole new philosophy change. Yeah. Yep, yep, they, they, they've done the same offense for three years. And I'm not saying firing coaches. I'm saying Harbaugh's going to be like, no, we're, we're changing it because this isn't working. Right. All right. So who's the Super Bowl champ? Uh, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I believe Tom Brady will repeat. <laughs> You're probably right. I cannot believe that I'm saying TB will win for TB back to back years. Who's winning that uh, that Rams Titans game? It's sadly, it's going to be the NFL MVP leading the Rams, Matthew Stafford, to victory. Matthew Stafford. God, if I have to hear that name one more time on one of these podcasts. <laughs> I'm just going to – every time something good happens, I want to go back and tag you with like a time code on it. There you go. Oh, look, Matthew Stafford, <laughs> you're not even getting there. Seattle and Baltimore, they are in the Super Bowl. And not only did Seattle take the monkey off their back with the whole Rams thing, Russell Wilson brings home – a Super Bowl title to the Northwest. Sounds like the most ridiculous sounding thing I've ever heard in my life. Seattle, the Good Super Bowl God champions. Almighty. Yeah, You know what's funny? We talked about that division in an earlier podcast, and y'all wouldn't blink if I would have sat here and predicted the Rams, Seattle, or 49ers to nope. win the Super Bowl. I've got That's them all in the playoffs. Is. Yeah. What a show. What a show. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Did a marathon show there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, we all have different folks winning here. That's going to be interesting to see kind of what ends up happening. Yeah. Any I'd... parting thoughts from you guys? Uh, I just, th I did a lot of projecting with this, with the Titans defense. There's just no way it's that bad. Um, same thing with Jacksonville's offense. There's no way it's that bad. They've got to get better just like the Titans defense does. And if it does and that offense maintains, I, I really see this happening. Um, I'm going to say um, in recap, Houston, you're horrible. And I'm happy for it. Jacksonville is on the rebound. This is not the year, though. And if the Titans can have any defense, their offense is loaded. Yeah, this could definitely be, definitely be a pretty special year for folks in Nashville. But guys, hey, thanks for joining us today. Uh, just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, I did not prepare anything like these guys did. So uh, feel free to give me all the, the 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 hate DMs and hate emails you want. Visit us at <laughs> Twitter at the underscore dad underscore code, as well as on Instagram at the dad code podcast, Facebook, the dad code. Email all those hate emails to the dad I mean, code. He podcast was saying Matt Ryan was gone. gone. Yeah, I know. I don't know why I wrote that down. I I think I was living in a fantasy world. I'm not really sure where. Ooh, speaking of fantasy world. Yeah, we got a fantasy draft coming up. Mm. Man, that's going to be interesting. Parker, are you ready? 
I am ready to draft right this minute, guys. Let's do it. Absolutely. All right, guys. Number one overall. Thanks for everything. You guys be well.